This is a basic introduction to the six historical thinking concepts. These concepts are the basis of the curricular competencies of the social studies curricula in British Columbia and you can find information about them at historicalthinking.ca and there are resources that can help you learn about and address historical thinking concepts on the Critical Thinking Consortium's website as well. Historical thinking concepts are tools and a lens through which you can look at situations in history and historical events with an eye to developing historical literacy or an ability to interact with, analyze, and understand history and events in history in a deep and understanding way. The first historical thinking concept is historical significance. How do we decide what and whose stories to tell? Events that have historical significance involve great change for large numbers of people over lasting periods of time. Historical significance also involves situations that are representative or that show trends and patterns over time. Continuity and change. Does change always mean progress? Continuity and change deals with the idea that some things stay the same or continue over time and other things change. Sometimes change is rapid, sometimes change is slow and gradual, um, but when you compare a point in history to the present or one point in history to another point in history and you compare and contrast the situations and the context, some parts are the same and other parts are different. Cause and consequence. What are the causes that are hidden from view? Cause and consequence involves asking how did actions and situations lead to or cause events in history and our present situation. There can be underlying causes, immediate causes, immediate consequences, or long-term consequences. Some consequences are unexpected, while others are expected, and some are more directly related to specific causes and others are indirectly related to specific causes. Some of the causes interact with other causes and contexts and situations, and cause and consequence involves looking at and asking how these different situations and contexts overlap to create the situation at a later point in history or the situation in the present. Historical perspectives. How can we ever understand the past? The historical concept, thinking concept of historical perspective is about understanding how social relationships, culture, technology, and other aspects of life shaped people's points of view in the past, shaped their beliefs and their opinions in ways that we don't even understand because right now our context is shaping our points of view, beliefs, and opinions. Historical perspective is about understanding how different things were in the past and how that impacted the thinking of people who lived in history. Ethical dimensions of history. What do historical injustices and sacrifices mean for us today? The ethical dimensions of history, this th historical thinking concept is about looking at things in the past and how examining how they happened in different contexts than ours now, but how we can still make ethical judgments about the past and actions that people took in the past 
to decide whether things in the past were right and why they were right or whether they were wrong and why they were wrong. Primary source evidence. How do we know what we know about history? Primary source evidence are sources of information about the past, including letters, documents, diaries, newspaper stories, advertisements, commercials, etc. And these things give us clues about what life was like in the past and these clues help us to understand the other historical thinking concepts like the ethical dimensions of history, the historical perspectives that people had, cause and consequence and how things interacted, and also how things are the same and how things are different than they were in the past. Both primary and secondary sources need to be evaluated in terms of their trustworthiness, accuracy, fairness, and completeness. Primary sources of evidence are those documents and other artifacts that are created in history by people living the history. Whereas secondary sources of information are those things like textbooks that are created by uh, historians analyzing or summarizing what happened in history as opposed to by the people who were actually living in the history. In grade six in British Columbia, the social studies curriculum has curricular competencies and those include asking questions, making and corroborating or confirming inferences and drawing conclusions about the content and origins of a variety of sources, including mass media. So these are the things that students who are working with evidence uh, need to be able to do if they're using the historical thinking concept relating to evidence. Ask questions, make and confirm inferences, and draw conclusions about the sources that they are looking at.